Hi guys, welcome back to Chaz's No Bullshit Reptile Advice. Today's request of sorts comes from Dan Genders. Uh, I've only got a small collection and it's happily remained static for a few years now. For quite a period, a few years ago I used to enjoy participating in forums, engaging with the broader community. After a while I got tired with the grief that went on and just withdrew to enjoying the snakes I keep. Touching on these historical and current shifts in the hobby was nice to hear. I believe that was in reference to um, me talking about the genetics explosion with royals and corns and such like. Um, and whilst I don't have a specific question or area to suggest, I'm certainly interested in your thoughts on things relating to the culture of the hobby past, present and future. I hope this makes some sense. It does. It does. Um, I got my first snake when I was 10. The year was 1990. I went down to my friends uh, and we were uh, playing around. Um, in the back garden and he said do you want to see my pet snake and I thought oh, fuck off You're taking the piss aren't you and he's like no, no 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 I'll show you I've got a real snake oh yeah show me then so he took me upstairs showed me the snake western old nose thought it was awesome it was ace I got given the number of a tele uh, uh, of a guy uh, a snake breeder called Chris the snake man how interesting but then it turned out that he was away photographing reptiles in Madagascar and he'd left an answer by phone message something to that he'd be back in a month's time six weeks time uh, any contact could go through someone called Linda well I didn't know Linda and I didn't even know Chris but I'd, I thought well I'm not hanging around turns out this Chris was Chris Matteson who many of the UK keepers will have got a book in their collection by him uh, probably one of the UK's most respected reptile authors and all round lovely man, really nice guy, um, who I meet later on in my, my hobby uh, and I did have some snakes from him eventually but being 10 years old, being impetuous, being a boy, having the patience of a flea, I needed the results straight away so I got on to my mum and dad, come on you need to take me, I want to go and, and look at some snakes and see about having one as a pet, can I, can I? My mum and dad were allergic to now on every type of pet so it was perfect thing because really they're like hypoallergenic you can't really be uh, very easily allergic to snakes unless you're allergic to keratin which is what your own nails and hair are made out of um, so at which point we did what everybody did back in the late 80s early 90s we looked in the yellow pages uh, we didn't we, I don't think at that point we'd even got um, a home PC or if we had it was brand new I still wasn't allowed near it at 10. My dad would do it all because he was doing an open university computing degree. Um, so yeah, I, it was yellow pages, so as a cultural shift, there you go. You go to your local shop, you support your local shop, that's definitely changed. Um, I have local customers, yeah, who support me and stand by me, which is great, but I also have customers that uh, are loyal one minute and then they're off down Birmingham somewhere or somewhere else. The good thing about Paul where he was at City Serpents was he was probably one of the only shops in South Yorkshire at the time so he just got the whole place to himself and was killing it. Um, and it wasn't until later on that competition started to arrive and competition now is rife so as far as the professional culture is it's never been more cutthroat and more serious. That's probably one of the things that I would probably say um, if you wanted to travel or you wanted to find out about stuff you would have to buy the reptilian magazine reptilia magazine which was more European um, the snake keeper snake breeder journals herptile from the IHS where you would get the newsletter the ads and they would tell you about the upcoming shows which the one that I would attend was at the Allenwell Sports uh, Hall in Cannock Staffordshire uh, and I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread um, it was an eighth of the size of Donny and had more species on display so that's another cultural shift um, so you could pick somebody for your poison all species were catered for uh, it was ace I mean there could be some rose tinted stuff going on I suppose if I'm truly honest maybe it was because of the excitement of being 10 and 11 Finally, you know, going to the show, seeing a room full of like-minded nutters into reptiles. I miss that excitement from being a kid. 
this hobby does jake you as you carry on in it unfortunately but i suppose that's just life um so yeah it, it, that for me was a wonderful time um people were far more helpful so i i hunted out <laughs> one of my nerd journals where i would make all my notes about my collection from when i was a kid i was the least academic kid that you would ever find but i loved reptiles and i researched and wrote about them and this is all self-motivated mum and dad had nothing to do with it so i could have been sat on an xbox or a playstation 4 or i could be writing in my journal about reptiles and once i'd read my book so i don't know is that another cultural change example it got here so uh philip draper from i think it was it was exopet or i've forgotten what his name what the company name was i'd been to the ham show in 1998 so i was 18 no 17 um and i bought a red tail racer um hello my name is charles thompson i'm a reptile breeder based in sheffield i have just recently returned from ham it was the terroristica show it was excellent there were a lot of species i'd not seen before um, two of the species I bought back were mangrove racers and pacific ground boas. If you don't mind too much, I would like for you to send me all the tips you have uh, on their care and maintenance. Um, because Philip Draper provided on his website a care sheet for Solomon Island boas, which is Candoia carinata, and Goniosoma oxycophallum, which is the other species that I purchased. Hello Charles, yes ham is the has a, the reputation of having every species you can think of and then some. Yeah, you're not the first person to say this last show uh, was not as cheap as previous shows. I'm going to the September show. I have to be honest, those articles were written by my very good friend of mine, Martin Eustace. If you have any specific questions, I'll ask him during our weekly chats on the phone. He isn't online. That's the <laughs> that says it all. He isn't online. Uh, and relay the answers back to you. Uh, I know of only one person in the UK that has successfully captured bred green racers. His name is Mark Watton, and he lives in Kent. Uh, they're imported, gravid, big time. Then the females are sold. Then the babies are sold as captive bred when it should be really captive hatched and have a high mortality rate. I'm not suggesting that yours are not CB, but I have my doubts. I do know from Martin's experience that they require a large temperature. Uh, require a large temperature range with substantial nighttime drops they're over 50 percent arboreal and require high humidity so it continues so philip has gone out of his way for a 17 year old kid he's never met to spend the time to email back it was a different time i'm not asking him to solve all of my problems i am not going to email him back this way that you will do on a forum and someone shit for trying to help you I am not asking somebody who is uninitiated to help me and then have that uninitiated person decide that they're experienced enough to offer help by going to Wikipedia and regurgitating whatever it is that they've read so yes as far as the past culture goes not everybody was online it was a new thing you, this email was a newfangled job. He'd got a very rudimentary website. I contacted him because of two written care sheets on there, asked him for any further tips, and he helped me out. So that was, yeah, 19, what was that, what did I say, 1998. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, that for me is kind of case in point. Um, so... We'd look at the reptilian, we'd look at reptilia, we'd phone up people because they'd leave their telephone number. Hello, I'm ringing to inquire about Dummerals, Boas, ringing about um, jungle carpet pythons. And you'd sit on the phone for 15, 20 minutes talking to them. As the internet began to gain pace, I sort of rode the crest of a wave. I'd become close friends with Paul. Uh, we'd been to Ham. We were doing some bits and pieces, breeding, dealing. And I used to advertise on Sea View Media, uh, which was like a backup website to the Reptilian, who Chris Newman ran it back then, I think. And um, 
I used to advertise on there as Thompson Exotics. I would breed and sell. So I was a young kid, and it, it, you know, I did pretty well back then. Um, but it was a bit more wild west. It wasn't as organised, and it wasn't, you know, the standards of care. There's certain things that I did back then that I'm not particularly proud of, whether that be husbandry or whatever. Benefit of hindsight, I suppose. But it was a different time, a different era. I can't apologise too profusely for it because. I loved it. It was probably one of my most favourite times of keeping. Um, people would help, would share. Uh, there was an abundance of stock. Loads of countries hadn't shut their borders, so there was all sorts coming in. Um, I think our opening stock, 2003, when I, I took over Snakes and Adders and opened the first day. I've been to Darren's at Crystal Palace Reptiles. We opened with five species, four or five species of a uh, Europlat leaf tail uh, gecko. You, can't, you can barely get one, and even then you're going to be blowing mega amounts of money being able to get it. I also had these newfangled things called crested geckos, and just basic buff skins at something like 195 quid each. Um, so yeah, things have changed as far as culture goes, but that's more species specific stuff. As the internet developed and we went from Seaview Media, everyone dropped Seaview Media, then started going to um, livefoods.co.uk. There was some real nice guys on there, uh, Pam B, Stuart Worth, I'm, I'm not Stuart Worth, a guy called Stuart on there. Um, I'm trying to think of the others. God, there's loads and it's escaped me. Like Paul Rollison, Linda Rollison, uh, all of these guys, they, 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 this is where we all sort of cut our teeth and got developed it. And, and they run Reptiles UK now on Facebook, 28,000 people. Um, and yeah, there, a woman called Neris. There was a load of other people that were regular posters. We all tried to help one another, looked after people, sort of raised them up. And then this sort of nefarious side kicked in where the old schoolers were still there and were still knocking about and would post every now and again blah you know and join in and offer their little pearls of wisdom and these the, the rise of wikipedia douchebaggery happened and ran them out of town and they were never to be seen again because you know such as like martin eustace he's not online maybe he eventually gets online he goes on he puts one answer on there somebody flames the shit out of him because they don't know who he is and he leaves so you lose all that wealth of information all that wealth of knowledge that is one of our biggest travesties i suppose as far as um the the, the forum revolution goes uh, we've empowered the people that didn't need to be empowered and belittled people with the knowledge uh, and that's that's a real shame um it's yeah it's a leveler and most people, some people will see a leveling as a, as a good thing, but there is nothing wrong with deference where it's applicable. I've said in the past, yeah, we're all equal in this hobby. We are. We all have an equal right to keep, but we're not equally experienced. So if I say to you, this is the way that you care for a, a newly imported emerald, having cared for in excess of 80 newly imported emeralds, unless you're an importer or another shop, shut the fuck up and listen. Don't argue with me. I don't care what Billy Bob 42 has said. This I've done this on numerous occasions. And if you need me to give a reason, I will. But if you're going to start being an ass, then I'm going to quickly regret even offering to help or offer advice in the first place. That's the way that these forums work. And then people like me get raged and angry. And we just either don't post anymore or say something that we're not supposed to say. Uh, and, and then there's trouble. Uh, from Live Foods, it moved on to Reptile Forums. That's where shit got crazy. Um, just so much crap. Fighting shit. And Facebook came along after that. Everybody dumped Reptile Forums like a hot potato. Uh, it had become a cesspool anyway. You wouldn't want it to stay there. Uh, and no doubt the story similar in America. Um, and then Facebook has created opportunities and then problems so you've got the opportunity to have a specialist group which is great and they share advice chameleon enthusiast group uh, which i was invited to the other day surrounded by him like uh, pet and nakas and uh, john courtney smith and others and that's where 
even with 27 years experience, I shut the fuck up and listen. This is what I mean about deference. I don't get wading in there. Eh, where well, I do this with my Yemens. And meh, I wouldn't be caught dead doing that with my Panthers. Because I understand that these dudes literally wrote the books on them. So don't do it. The douchebagger is not necessary. This group seems to have had a good douchebag filter, which is nice. But unfortunately, on a lot of Facebook groups, that filter has not been applied. Uh, and you, you run the gambit of personalities, people overly enthusiastic to help, and it's with a genuine passion that they want to help, but they are totally misguided in what they're telling you. Or the people that know their own mind, only know one way of keeping, will only consider their way of keeping, and that's it. Um, then there's the genuinely experienced who can't be asked just like resign themselves to do whatever the fuck you want I don't care which is how you find yourself on Facebook a lot of the time um, the whole reason I do this these no BS things is because I'm so fed up of it either being so cutesy and cool let's look how cute this is and stroke its chin and blah 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 and turning everybody into simpletons and the hobby becoming an idiocracy or uh, know-it-alls and all the rest of it so just being straight and saying you know this is my opinion it is not gospel this is my thoughts on a situation so I can't being honest with you I can't say that my looking back at the culture in the early 90s isn't looking back through rose tinted spectacles but I know for a fact that diversity was better but husbandry was poorer Husbandry has now improved, and we're on an upwards trajectory, which is superb. Um, but then what that does for the future, it poses problems in a cultural perspective, because what we're now getting is a fork in the road, where all tub keepers and ball python breeders are going to the left, and all bioactive, advanced, advanced living ecosystem vivariums are going to the right. And they're both equally vociferous at going after one another. In fact, probably the, the bioactive dudes are, are, are more vocal. And then we've got like this dank herp memes per boogaloo, herp snob shit posting on uh, Facebook, which are all these memes which are just poking fun at people who like colour moths or breed royal pythons and the fact that we're not keeping an obscure brown colubrid which I like obscure brown colubrids as much as the next dude but don't be a prick and you get the feeling that these guys in, in this advanced section, bio active section these were all the nerds that would perpetually have their heads shoved down a toilet in school and yet somehow they're empowered because I have isopods in my vivarium. <sighs> so what we've got is this 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 fork in the road. Everyone's rowing with one another. Um, we're almost certainly going to go to bioactive way long term. I think it's uh, potentially an exciting time. I think the advancements that we're making um, for the future with the digital thermostats, the UV products that are being developed, um, it's superb. Our knowledge base is great. It's in a fluid state. The people that are doing the work openly admit, such as John Courtney Smith, I won't be writing the same stuff that I'm writing now in five years because research will have moved me along. I'll be on to the next thing. This is where we are. It's great. And the thing is, this train's been chugging along for the last 27 years. When I look back at what I did when I was 10 to what I did now, honestly, I would turn around and give myself a slap across the back of the head. What the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? But that's the way we kept stuff back then. Problem is, some people stopped developing. Some people didn't continue to learn, didn't move on. And dare I sort of problem. Uh, the idiots that think that, yeah, I'll keep me 12 foot python on a heat pad, it'll be alright. It's not going to be alright. It's not scientific. You're a fucking idiot, you know? Like, so, this is where there is a, a slight disconnect. We need to try and bring these, these people back 
lead the, the tub guys maybe with a carrot rather than whipping them with a stick and just slagging them off and making them feel worthless. And bioactive guys, you haven't reinvented the wheel. You've introduced a huge pathogen risk to your animals. You don't know enough about it. Or the ones of you that do are few, and the many sheeple that have followed you because they like the idea of being bioactive with my uh, bromeliads in, they're the ones that are going to fuck their animals up because it's not nailed down enough. That's where I have an issue. Um, going towards the future, I think that the animal activities license is going to have serious repercussions in the short term for shops. I think that the retic market is going to burst. That is going to create a multitude of issues. The animal activities license will help see to that with the current um, rule set for vivarium sizes, which is for snakes two thirds uh, the snake's length in length of the viv and one third depth uh, of the snake for the depth of the viv. So say. A 6x3 viv you can keep a 9 foot snake in, uh, a 10x5 you can keep a 15 foot snake in, you get me? So when you start thinking that the biggest boards we can buy are 8x4, then what are we going to do with everything north of 12 foot, you know? Um, unless we start building these huge custom vivs and there is a, a huge population of giant pythons out there. Some of these big breeders are already conducting their fire sales and selling everything off. That tells you everything you need to know. Ponzi scheme is failing. People haven't realised and haven't switched on to it yet. It's scary. Uh, and I don't know how that's going to go. I am incredibly fearful for the irresponsible actions of the few that will affect the many when it comes to giants and how they're going to dispose of their snakes if they can't sell them and there is no market for them anymore. That is, I, have, I have serious worries about. Um, and I'm not innocent in that because historically I've sold giants and I've still got Burmese in stock now and so there's all a bit of a quandary and it's difficult it's really difficult I hope that certain things are going to get repealed uh, and sorted out the law is here to stay but the, 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 the standards can change can be fluid so I'm hoping that common sense will out look into our, the, our leaders for guidance, Chris Newman and Repta are like chocolate fire guards, beyond fucking useless, beyondly useless. Looking to them for anything is a mistake, uh, like the blind leading the blind. This AAL has been so important, so important to Repta that the head of Repta has spent two years planning and building a rescue centre. The single biggest shake up in pet licensing since 1951, since the Pet Animals Act. And we're doing rescue centres, rather than every second of every day dealing with the AAL. Make of that what you will. But if you think it's okay, you're a fucking idiot. I'll tell you that for free. Um, so, yeah. I want to say the future is bright. I think there's a lot of question marks over it. I have concerns. I think from a husbandry perspective, from a knowledge perspective, breeding successes, UV lighting, thermostatic control, understanding of ecology of different species, which has never been better. Political landscape, the potential clusterfuck coming down the road with the giants, the animal activities license throwing everything up in the air, I think we're, we're, we're in for a rough ride for a few years. I think that everybody who's now cashing out of Burmese uh, retics, boas and ball pythons will cash into colubrids. What that will then do is then that will price out average Joe for your Mexican blacks, for everything else. We've already seen pairs going at 600 quid a pair for Mexican black kings at, at Doncaster Reptile Show. Okay, they didn't sell, but it's a precedent, a dangerous precedent, and one that won't get reversed. These guys are going to be cash rich because they've shifted all their gear. They're going to want to buy up. They can buy up volume. If they've had room for storing 20 decent sized retics, imagine the amount of colubrids that they can put in there. Oh, therefore, there's going to be a, a serious gap in the market uh, everything will get swallowed up and demand will be high prices will skyrocket 
I mean, yeah, it's a good time to be in colubrids if you've got the colubrids. If you're after them, you're going to get tucked around the corner. And then something else will have a genetics explosion, and then everybody will dump the colubrids and jump onto them. That's just what happens. It's cyclical, it's cynical, uh, it's sad, but that is our hobby. Unfortunately, we've started chasing the dollars, and it's less about how interesting or rare something is, it's what it's worth. And that's the shame. If it wasn't about what it was worth, then we wouldn't have 400 different colour morphs of Royal. 100 different colour morphs of Retic. It's just the way of things. Money is the will of the world. It's what makes it spin. Um, there are always going to be those people out there that concentrate on stuff. But for the past four years, we've been screaming about diversity at Snakes and Adders. We've been trying to promote all the weird and wonderful stuff. And we hold it very dear. The whole purpose is of us producing our own book for uh, Facebook, which was like a flip guide on beginner snakes, is to highlight the depth of species that you can keep as a beginner. Um, and that's kind of <coughs> where we are. I don't know, I feel like I'm rambling now. It, it's, it's, it's one of them where I want to come back on a positive note. Uh, Dan, I really do. Um, But I'm worried. The video hanging there. Uh, I had a bit of a nightmare with my battery and it died. Uh, I did continue to try and bring it back onto a positive edge. But uh, I had to edit it there because I started rambling again and then it just cut off. So um, the way that I brought it back round was to say that 10 year olds such as I was in 1990 have got it better than we've ever had it before. The mark of the people who are custodians of the hobby is the way that we leave it for the next generation that follows us. Are we going to leave them in a better place or a worse place? When it comes to husbandry, when it comes to the understanding of the animals, when it comes to the infrastructure we have in place, whether it's from vivarium and terrarium design, the advances in bioactive, the advances that no doubt we will see more of from the bioactive guys once we get a firmer handle on what's going on. From the uh, product mavericks like uh, John Courtney Smith at Arcadia, like Paul Hitt Greenhoff at, at Microclimate, we're pushing the envelope. We are always improving our ways and means of maintaining our animals. It is an exciting time from a product perspective. We are slightly lacking in species diversity, but I believe that we're about to see an uptick in that because finally the genetics explosion has exhausted itself. Hurrah. Um, so, yes, the kids are better informed. They have a better network of people that they can ask. They can find information like that. Um, all right, granted, it isn't always right, but if I'd have had access to the information that that kids have now, when I was 10, there'd have been no stopping me. No stopping me. I had to fight tooth and nail for every book, piece of paper, uh, library trips, the works, and it's just all there on tap. It's crazy. Uh, and I think maybe part of that spoils them, so they don't need to work as hard at it as we did back in the day. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that they're in a better position for that. I think we really need to work harder on the ethics of how we operate, how we work, the breeding of giants, the, the, the emphasis on money. Is that what we want to teach them? Do we just want to teach them about how wonderful the animals are um, and that there is equal value in a small brown obscure snake as there is in a sexy pink purple blue zigzaggy one that matches your curtains you know that 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 would be my take on it um the whole purpose of the, this channel of everything that i've done with regards to the advice videos is i very much see uh knowledge as um something that I pass on free that I have no right to retain and I have not accrued my experience or knowledge to become greedy or miserly with it to hide it away I think I've got a responsibility to share it with people I think everybody 
who is of experience should spend more time giving back to the hobby that's given them so much when it comes to our thoughts, our theories and how we move this hobby forward. There are wolves in sheep's clothing all over this hobby right to the very top. And there are elements of this hobby that are rotten to the very core. Um, and I hope that when these kids have grown up, we finally rooted them from out of their little uh, burrows and dens, exposed them for what they are, and they're gone, so that we can get on with making a hobby positive, um, self condemning, self-congratulating, self-maintaining, self-managing, where we are the captains of the ship, we decide the standards and whether it's acceptable or not what we do. We do not carte blanche, just accept everything we do and any such uh, obstructions to that are above and beyond. We need to make sure that bad keepers are held to account and that the antis have no argument you took the sting out of their tail yeah we know we've got shit keepers we're dealing with it uh, we're on this is the process we're going to work together we don't just band round them because they're one of the lads and we ignore what they're doing we, we, we're we going to take them to task that's what we need to do so um, yeah on a positive note there's, there's going to be better informed kids than ever before there's going to be um Hopefully, a far more transparent um, way this hobby works with regards to people finally retiring, leaving their posts and letting the new generation get on with it, who can communicate with the proletariat and make sure that information is disseminated in a timely fashion um, and it isn't all behind closed doors or boys clubs because that serves nobody apart from themselves so we'll keep these coming um i'm sorry uh, debbie downer again i suppose but it's hard that there's not a lot to recognize from when i started when i was 10 there's some real good stuff but the bad stuff at the minute or the stuff that potentially poses an issue is huge there's no escaping it so uh we'll keep the videos coming thanks for watching guys we'll see you again soon cheers